when Puffy done what Puffy did or what Puffy do, it's not a surprise. Everybody know what it is. I mean, you got to, to be able to do that type of to a woman and other women, but it's not new. It's not like it's a... Uh, new news honey if you thought we are about done with all the accusations being blasted in our faces about diddy you thought wrong because it's like the accusations have not even started another criminal suge knight is now joining the conversation and he is dropping names of more of diddy's victims and diddy's former assistant capricorn clark and other former employees have also been spilling the tea about what really happened to them okay in the lawsuit that cassie filed against diddy she already mentioned that suge Knight and Diddy were not on good terms. Of course, you are also aware that the clash between Diddy and Suge began in the mid-90s, which was part of the East Coast-West Coast rivalry that led to the deaths of Tupac and Biggie. Well, Cassie gladly gave an account of what was happening between them, and it scared her to death. In fact, while describing one of the times that she really felt scared for her life, the lawsuit noted, for example, on one occasion when Mr. Combs and Miss Ventura were using drugs, together in his home, one of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mel's Drive-In Diner in Los Angeles. Apparently, Diddy began to get dressed, retrieved multiple firearms from a safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Suge was dining. And as a result, Cassie became terrified and began to cry. Let's just say that Suge also had a few words for Diddy, and during an episode of his Collect Call with Suge Knight podcast, which dropped on November November 24th, Suge revisited his longtime rivalry with Diddy and made even more allegations about Diddy's alleged behavior towards women. What Puffy done, what Puffy did, or what Puffy do, it's not a surprise. Everybody know what it is. I mean, you got to, to be able to do that type of to a woman and other women, but it's not new. It's not like it's a uh, new news. Suge also revealed that Diddy also once roughed up a female assistant, Capricorn Clark, because she didn't tell him about Cassie's fling with Kid Cudi. And to keep everything hidden, Diddy settled with Cap. It was an Interscope person. The Interscope check that paid her to settle or he wouldn't go to jail. About Kid Cudi, Cassie mentioned that Diddy allegedly blew up his car during Paris Fashion Week. According to Cassie, she briefly had a fling with Kid Cudi in 2011, when she and Diddy were going through what she called a rough patch. And after she reunited with Diddy, he found some emails between Kid Cudi and Cassie. And that is when he grew progressively angry. In fact, the lawsuit says that Diddy wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when he blew up his car. And true to his word, Kid Cudi's car did blow up in his driveway. And just like Cassie was paying for hooking up with Kid Cudi, Capricorn also allegedly received a proper whooping for knowing about it. Yeah, I know that after hearing about that, a lot of people were like, where is Capricorn's lawsuit? Or why did she continue working as the devil's assistant for all those years? Girl, I don't know anything about the NDAs Diddy made his employees sign, but since the lawsuits became public, Capricorn also made it very clear that she would no longer be keeping quiet about what went down when she was working for Diddy. Remember Cassie also mentioned in her lawsuit that a lot of things that happened to her were witnessed by Diddy's staff and employees of Bad Boy Entertainment and Diddy's related businesses. But no one dared to speak up. In fact, these assistants were the ones tasked with the responsibility of taking gifts to Cassie after a DV incident and Cassie even said in the lawsuit that the assistants were also the ones who would help to set up the freak-offs where the trap place, including by setting up the hotel suite with the baby oil and Astro Glide. Honestly, if everything Cassie said about Diddy was true, I see how even the people who worked for him when they were together were too terrified to say a thing. I mean, Cassie even said in a lawsuit that after one of the incidents, Diddy's head of security and assistant saw her and they both began to cry. But I guess with Cassie finally telling her truth and people like Suge name dropping more victims, former employees like Capricorn no longer see the need to be a afraid. Capricorn was actually among the first people to react to the lawsuit with a cryptic post, saying, don't take the path of the wicked, don't follow those who do evil, stay away from that path, don't even go near it, turn around and go another way. Proverbs 4 verse 14. Then she added how even if the doors were unlocked, she would be willing to walk away from the money and said that 2011 was hell. The post was also accompanied by an old black and white picture of herself wearing shades and sporting bangs, alongside 
inside a second image that contained the text, they gonna cross you for somebody who gonna cross them. After Suge Knight talked about what happened to her, Capricorn was back at it again, and in a tweet where she seemingly called Diddy the devil, she wrote, Black women end up being the sacrifice for the effery. Last 11 years of my life, I have had to deal with everyone's nonsensical allegiance to the devil. I pray that ends. I don't think highly of any of you. Can't keep your head down and pretend it's just cool no more. Do better. She also gave a shout out to Kim Porter in a different post where she was like, they will skin you and wear you, baby girl. Then pretend they never wanted the skin. Kim was the only person who didn't switch up. The only one. Dark times. I am personally very triggered. I pray it's over. I never deserved this. Stop. Wow. I know that these people were required to sign NDAs, but shouldn't they like be illegal when it comes to things like this? And is there still room for another lawsuit? Because it looks like Capricorn really has a lot to say. Speaking of people who worked for Diddy, another person who came up in Cassie's lawsuit is Roger Bonds. According to the lawsuit in January 2009, after Diddy found out that Cassie spoke to another music manager at a party in Los Angeles, he became enraged and she had hoped speaking to this manager would allow her to further grow her career and that Diddy would be happy for her. But instead, he became extremely angry and pulled her out of the club where the party was taking place. Apparently, in the car leaving the club, Diddy descended on Cassie, pushing her into a corner of the vehicle and stomped on her face. In the lawsuit, it says that security staff Roger Bonds tried to stop things from escalating but was unable to de-escalate the situation. And even when the car arrived at Diddy's residence, Cassie attempted to run away. But Diddy followed her and proceeded to again kick her in the face. So Roger Bonds responded to the entire drama by posting on his stories, this is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that against Cassie or Diddy or anyone else. This is me telling my truth as I truly remember it for two reasons only. First, because I have four daughters. So on all dudes, my truth as I seen it, saw it, and was involved with for years. He also shared a since deleted post with pictures of himself and Cassie over the years with a caption that read, I'm willing to tell my truth because for so many years I was quiet. Nothing matters now but family. In one of his recent posts, Roger also captioned a story about responding to the lawsuits. Never keep your word when the reason you kept your word no longer exists. Clearly, Roger knows that there are so many other people who are still probably scared of going against Diddy. But you know who else is sure that the number is bigger? Aubrey O'Day. Aubrey once again contributed to the scandal, saying that there were more people who were probably scared to speak. She wrote in a tweet of her own, I got fired for being promiscuous on national TV. Not only false, but y'all know now that man loves promiscuity. So why did I really get fired? Y'all already know. And as talented as I was, the only job opportunity I was offered after was the cover of Playboy. Then she continued and added, not everyone was able to make that deadline safely with proper protections in place, or has even begun to come forward. Straight up, if you think this ish being silenced for years only happened once or twice, you are sadly mistaken. Maybe more people will speak up or maybe not. But what do you think, guys? Do you believe that there will be more people brave enough to give their stories? And what are your thoughts on Suge Knight and Diddy's former employees also exposing him? Drop those thoughts in the comments section below.